make sure um, that we get everything going. Um, I know that it's probably been a long week for everybody, so I'm sure people will start filtering in um, in just a little bit. But I will go ahead and start the recording and um, kick us off. So um, Jillian and I were from Project Invent, and this is a virtual workshop series that we're doing um, to complement a um, on-demand course we're doing in partnership with Infosys Foundation. So we'll talk a little bit about that later, but the, the topic of today is learning made real through virtual community partnerships. Um, community partnerships is the bread and butter of the work we do at Project Invent. And with COVID, um, you know, people are remote, people are thinking that real world learning um, can't happen because we're all in this digital world, but we've actually had a lot of success in continuing our program, um, which, which relies a lot on students interacting with people outside of their school. So we just wanted to share a little bit about the, our tips um, on how that works and honestly just make the case for why now more than ever, kids need to be um, working with um, their community. So um, my name is Kelly Ojeda and I'm the Director of Programs at Project Invent. And um, my, my role really is to just oversee all of our programs nationwide. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do. Um, and then this is my colleague, Jillian. Jillian, I'll let you, oh, and I'm based in Houston. So um, down in Texas, Jillian, I'll let you introduce yourself. Awesome, thanks, Kelly. Uh, my name is Jillian. I'm based in Chicago, originally from upstate New York, um, but I've been here for about five years. And I'm a, our program manager at Project Invent. So I support our teachers nationwide who are in our fellowship program. And I also support our Accelerate program, which this year is supporting 13 teams with moving from prototype to product. Um, so our agenda today um, is we're just gonna we're just going to do um, a little warm up and then talk a little bit about Project Invent. We have a really exciting guest speaker chatting a little bit about the um, experience, or we want to give you an experience of the value of community partners. Talk a little bit about the tips and tricks for virtual partnerships, and then we'll have some Q and A. Real flexible. I have a feeling we'll we'll end a little early today. Um, and one thing you'll need if you want to actually take part in the, the workshop side is just a paper, piece of paper and a writing utensil. So um, if you want to take some time to grab that, um, you can, um, but we don't need it just yet. So we'll just move forward. Um, okay, so for the norms, feel free to uh, put anything in the chat, chat to everyone so we can see it, ask questions, and we will be sharing this deck. And in fact, Jillian can drop that link in now for us. So um, to get started, um, I, I think that something that I'm really craving right now is like realness. <laughs> Everything we're doing is so virtual. And I found myself like wanting to write on paper and wanting to just get off my screen. And, and I, I think that whenever we think about students, um, we have to understand that they're feeling this too. And even though they're digitally native and they've been raised with screens, um, the real world is really, um, it just feels really far away right now after, after this year and everything everyone's gone through. So um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have, um, do an activity that one of my professors did with me where we all got an orange highly recommend this for your next meeting. Um, we all got an orange and we ate it together. And I know that sounds so weird, but we had people in my class from um, India, they were in China, there was someone in Taipei and people all over the United States. And it was just so nice to share that sensory experience. And I think as much as we can appeal to the senses right now, um, it's just gonna help um, our mind and our, our body and our soul. So, with that, here's a really healy feely um, connection uh, piece for us, but um, I didn't know if everyone would have an orange. So I just wanted us to think about um, putting our feet somewhere. 
where, what would be something you'd want to feel on your feet right now? And to my Harvard folks, since we have a little bit of a low attendance today, if y'all don't mind engaging with this one part, I would love for you to just share. Where would you love, where would you feel on your feet right now? What's something? And so I'll start. I live by a beach and I love playing sand on my feet. That's, that's something I know not everyone likes, but I really enjoy um, warm sand. So if I could just have one or two people share um, and everybody think about what's something you'd love to feel on your feet. I'll do one. This is, this is Bill. So I have a adorable granddaughter. She likes to stand on my feet and then we walk together in the yard. I love that. So you want to feel her little feet on your feet. Yep. Oh, I love it. Anyone else? What do you have? What do you want to feel on your feet? So I can tell you, I can jump in here. So um, I love the beach part, but but the best part that I love is uh, walking in the ocean or in Lake Tahoe in the water right next to the beach with my dogs. Oh. So I, I have a Doberman and a little Shih Tzu and the Shih Tzu is pretty much in the water while the Dobi is barely getting in the water. So it, the it's little awesome. one is brave and goes in the yeah. water. The big one's afraid. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. We'll take one more. What do you want to feel on your feet right now? Oh, Ted, I think Ted, you're muted. There you okay, go. I, I'll, I'll admit, I admit that we have a little Australian shepherd named Callie who likes licking my toes and my wife's toes. I love it. <laughs> and, and we enjoy that, but we don't want to tell people about that. I love that. I'm sure that <laughs> I think we all secretly love that with the, with the pups, um, even with their stinky breath. Um, awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, hopefully you're feeling a little grounded, no pun intended, just thinking about the sensory. And I, I really encourage you just in general, I know all on Zooms, um, to just, to just um, try to bring that sensory into the world um, a little bit. So, um, hey, Jimmy, we're, we're running a little behind. So if you want to just hang back, <laughs> awesome. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about a community partner um, and, and what, why we think right now they matter. So when we define community partner, um, we're talking about somebody in the community outside of the school that can share unique experiences with students. Um, that can be someone facing a unique experience, someone working with people who face unique experiences, really just bringing someone from the external to talk with students. And this is um, something that we read um, in a Harvard um, Business Review article that's recently come, that, come out on how can we help um, adolescents right now? What do adolescents need to have um, well-roundedness and to feel grounded? And one of the points that they said is giving teenagers um, a solution to be a part of, giving them something that matters uh, to work on. And so empowering them to find opportunities for civic engagement, community service, and connection is actually really important in this time of uncertainty. Um, and the thing that's sad is a lot of service learning has been cut from schools because life is crazy, schools are crazy. Um, but we know that this is actually something that matters because they need to understand that there's meaning to school at this moment. Because when everything is through a screen and everything is worksheet based or problem set based, um, it, it can feel a little cog in the machine um, and giving them a purpose and a meeting is always important for teenagers, but even more now. And so we really want to make the case that we should be providing these experiences for students right now, tomorrow. <laughs> so we're Project Invent, um, just to give you some context. Um, so we uh, focus on empowering students as innovative problem solvers. We're a project-based learning um, program, and we're a nonprofit. We're in 50 schools uh, throughout the country right now. And we have students build solutions to community problems. So they, uh, students work with people outside of their school and that, that have a, face a unique challenge. And they actually invent a product, an engineer, a product that they get to pitch um, and create a business plan around. So we see invention as the three pillars, design thinking, engineering, and entrepreneurship. 
we get kids to come up with impactful ideas, make those a reality, and then we have them go outside of the classroom to pitch them. Um, these are just some examples of some projects that students have done in the past. Um, Good Night was a smart blanket to help veterans with PTSD um, not have nightmares. Unwind was a, um, a smart stress ball that helped students who face anxiety. And Angela Watches was a smart watch to help prevent sexual assault um, with among women. So our students are dealing with real issues and real challenges, um, but they're doing that through getting to know a user outside of their own experience. And just a little, um, just a little information on, on how our program runs. Students do this throughout the whole year. And then at the end of the year, they actually pitch at a demo day um, in Silicon Valley and virtually and in New York. And so we do this by training teachers, um, getting students to empathize with clients or community partners, teaching them the skills to build technologies and then how to pitch those. Um, and this is where we're at now, um, and we're growing each year, which is really exciting. Um, but I want to stop talking to you, and I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth. Not that you're a horse, Jimmy. It's just a phrase. Um, so we invited Jimmy. He is one of our past community partners. He's worked with um, a lot of our students, and I think that it's really important for us to see what do people that have worked with students in the past, what's their view of this? How did, the, how did that experience um, feel for them? And so I thought having him share a little bit about it would be great. So Jimmy, I'm gonna pass it over to you and just let you share your story and, uh, and your experience. And actually you're muted. Can you unmute real quick? Hello. Hey. hello. You're good to go. Oh, good. Well, first things first, I want to thank you all for being here on this Zoom meeting. But Project Invent, for me, I'll make a story very a long story very short. Project Invent and meeting Connie Liu and working with these students has saved my life in a lot of ways. About four and a half years ago, I suffered an accident which left me completely blind. I'm at 42 hours of surgery. I've been on my deathbed. I'm 32 years old. I was a technician. I still am a technician, blind technician at United Airlines right now. But Project Invent for me, I never thought I'd be where I'm at right now in my life. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Project Invent, if it wasn't for meeting Connie, if it wasn't for working with those students. They brought me out of a, a whirlwind of emotion. Little do they know how much they helped me. I met them their sophomore year of high school. They just graduated and now they're all in, some went to very good colleges, some took gap years due to what's going on, but I listened to them grow. I can't physically see anything, it's pitch black for me, but I'm here because of them. This accident happened to me. If it wasn't for this accident, I wouldn't be who I am today. And if I, I don't share this with many people, but if I were to go back, and change and have a time machine and change what happened to me, I wouldn't. Because I learned a lot about myself. I learned who I really am. And these kids, these students, Connie, everybody, they took me out of a darkness that I can't even explain. And the emotion, the empathy, I st I'm still in contact with the majority of them right now. And it makes me feel very, very good that I can impact these students the way I have. Not just the one team, I've, I've worked with many teams. I met Connie about five months after my accident. Never did I think I would be where I'm at today. I believe you meet everybody for a reason. But Project NVAN has changed my life and my outlook on the future beyond words. I'm 32 years old. When I was in high school, I hated the textbooks. I had a very, very low GPA. And for me, I liked using these hands. I like thinking, I like problem solving. Now I'm a mechanic at United Airlines. Two and a half years have been back working blind. I'm the first completely blind mechanic. I've overcome things I never thought I'd have to. But like I said, I wish there was curriculum and project that meant when I was in high school. Talking to these students, I trapped them by being honest because we're all human here. 
we're all the same and we all have our ups we all have our downs i've seen the good side of bad and the bad side of good and everything between but i've learned from it success is my only option failure is not but i've not always have i had that attitude Project Invent, Connie, and Team Stria, and the, and the students from the East Palo Alto Academy have helped me. I know I lost my vision. All this happened to me for a reason, like I said. I don't want to be 65 years old, but ready to retire, asking, what could I have done? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? I've been on my deathbed, and I learned not to live with any regret. And Project Invent, being here right now, talking to this big group of people, no, I can't see it, but it warms my heart makes me feel good inside. If I had any other words to express it, listening to these kids grow, because I can't see them, but I've heard them. Talking to them, listening to their interests change from sophomore to seniors, there's a lot that changes. And I remember those years very well. Big reason what I can do, what I could do today is I have a picture graphic memory. I picture everything in my head. Uh, and Project Invent, I know we'll be here for a long time because I know this happened to me. I was the pioneer, I was the start. And look where it's come today. It's these teachers now that help. I've met so many, I've empowered so many others. All I say every day is if I can inspire one person, I'm happy. I'm happy to have inspired many. Team Stria, were at the, when they were at the South by Southwest, uh, they won the award, the number one. Little did they know, they called me that day, they won that award. Little did they know it was on the day, uh, the year to date, uh, four years after that I, or three years after that I had lost, that my accident happened. And I'm sure you guys are gonna wonder what, what happened to me. And I'll just go ahead and say it. I accidentally took a gunshot to the head. It's a long story, but like I said, I'm very lucky to be here. I've lost my sense of smell, my taste, but my feeling is through the roof. I've learned what it's like. I've learned and seen what drives people. It's flashiness. It's, it's money you want to accomplish. You want to see what other people have. You want that. Well, you lose all that. You find out who you really are for yourself. And these students, talking to them and working with them, I tell them it's not about the money. When you grow, when you grow up, build something, build a legacy, something that'll live forever. And I wanna thank you guys all for being here. And I'm a very, very open person. And like I said, if I can inspire one of you, it's changed my life, Project Invent. Connie, she's an angel. So are all the students. If they can do this to me, there is a point where I wish that bullet killed me. There is a point where I was fighting, fighting with myself. Why am I still here? I know why now. It wasn't easy, but Project Invent helped me. And I know I could help many others. And I look forward to being and seeing everybody at Demo Day one day. And any questions any of you have, feel free to ask and ask Connie or give my number or my email address. I'm here. Long live Project Invent. Jimmy, always appreciate it. You're our biggest cheerleader. And I always appreciate how um, how open you are with your story. And I, I want to just like highlight to everyone, this is something I think is interesting. And Jimmy, maybe you can speak to this, but I think sometimes people find those that are visually impaired or have disabilities, like that we shouldn't ask them to share. And I think that your testimony of, you know, working with the students is just goes to show that, you know, there's so much good that can come from um, connecting people like you with students. Um, and even if people aren't doing project event, but they're just doing a project, um, it could be for an English class or a social studies class or, or whatever, um, bringing in a real experience with someone like you who's so open is so beneficial. And that relationship, I mean, look at you now, you still talk with the students you worked with. Um, how was how was the whole collaboration pitched to you? I wonder maybe some of the educators here it might help them. Like, how do they find a Jimmy? Like, how did how did someone ask you to work with students? And and how would you give advice to people that are approaching um, commun future community partners to get involved with students? What's the best way to ask? 
Well, to be honest, my experience, asking is one thing, but when it comes down to it, uh, my experience with disabled people and other handicaps and whatnot, the biggest thing, and I've been a victim of it too, is you fight your disability. A lot of people don't like to admit or want to, to accept that they've that they've lost, that they're handicapped. They fight it. I fought it. Once you accept it, that's when you get to move on. But those students, they helped me accept it in a lot of ways. Asking, actions speak louder than words. I would always say, say more, go, go to help, go say anything I can do, go above and beyond. Because there's no telling which way you, you can, you know how you can, you could help somebody. Could be the littlest things. Ask the way I was approached was with Connie, um, my Vista Center where I learned how to use my walking uh, stick. Uh, Cause I was a very driven person. After, uh, and they saw that over there at the Vista Center. And so that's who put me in contact with uh, Nanya and Jackie who were working with Connie for the first Project Invent. It wasn't even Project Invent yet. And they were designing a wallet for uh, the blind. But I was very new to the game and I was honest. I said, honestly, I haven't been blind that long. I don't know all the challenges, but I'm happy that you're here to help. I'm happy that you already took took the time to come to my house to ask me my issues to write them down to be to want to help that's what drove me so much but like i said actions speak louder than words i preach that a lot um i don't know if that answers your question does it it definitely did um well jimmy this was so helpful and i i really love just being able to hear from you and your experience and i i always appreciate it when you when you share what it was like to work with students um did anyone else have a question for jimmy if not i'll i'll let him get back to his afternoon oh no worries <laughs> awesome well jimmy thank you so much and i'm sure we'll be talking soon Yes, definitely. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. I love you, Project and Event. See you. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so I, I wanted to, um, we're so thankful for Jimmy. He's so honest and open and we always appreciate that. Um, and so that was something we just wanted to, you to hear from him directly. Um, and now I kind of want to simulate a little bit for you how we've had students work with Jimmy before. And, and Jimmy's not our only community partner. We've had, like, I, I don't want you to think that, oh, you know, you just lucked out. You found someone that's so passionate and, and, um, and you found someone that was so passionate and so active. Um, we've got community partners for every student, uh, student group we have across the nation. And a lot of times our students and educators are the ones recruiting them. Um, and so there's Jimmy's, there's Abigail's, there's Jose's. We have a lot of amazing, um, a lot of amazing people that have gotten to work with students. They're out there, people that are ready to share their story. And so um, I just want to quickly, we're actually not going to listen to the Jimmy interview because I think he shared so much already, but this is a six minute interview that you'll also have access to if you ever want to practice um, this type of work. But I wanted to kind of give you the experience of, of what an activity our students do. And so um, the first thing, what no matter what type of project you're doing, um, is, is really having the community partners and the students meet for the first time and just letting the community partners share their story. Um, whether this is gonna be a science project or an English project, just get teaching your students how to listen is a skill we can all benefit from. And so we have the students have a very, very um, uh, introductory interview with their partners at the beginning of the year. And then we have them do some empathy activities after. Um, and so we'll make them debrief and we'll have them share what new insights did you gain and really what surprised you? What was maybe an assumption you made of Jimmy? like? Were you surprised that he can get on Zoom, you know, as someone that is visually impaired? And then we'll have them make something called a journey map, 
where they track his, his day and his experience so we can look at his ups and downs. Now for you guys, we're actually going to do something together because I wanted to show you how this can be done virtually. Um, so I'm just going to drop a link in the chat. Um, and I hope that we can all just participate together. This is something called Mural. I don't know if anyone's ever used Mural before, but it's a digital whiteboard. And this is a great way in this remote world to work with your students um, and to collaborate. And so um, if like, I share um, your new window, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> you. Here's my awesome new though. Mural is one of yeah. my favorite tools. Right. Just don't get confused because um, if you start editing on my window, you won't see it. So open it up in your own window so you can add a few post it notes. Um, so if I would have just introduced my students to Jimmy and, they, he, and we would have had that lovely conversation, I would then bring them into this empathy map. Um, and this is just a little activity to start training students on how to process um, what they've learned. And so this is a map and it's in four quadrants. So we're gonna write down some things Jimmy said. We're gonna write down some things that we think he thinks. And we're gonna write down some things that he did. And we're going to write some things about what he feels. So maybe just try to add one post-it for each. Um, we'll just take a little bit of time um, and we'll just add something he said, something he thinks, something he does, something he feels. You just double click on a post-it and you can start typing. I added my four, so I'll just start reading some things people are saying. Um, he says, Connie's an angel. If you don't know, if you're new to Project Event, Connie's our executive director. Um, and I don't think he knew she wasn't on the call, which is really fine. Um, he says, if I can inspire one person, that's enough. Um, he says, I still stay in touch with my students or the students. I cannot see, I cannot taste, and I feel more than I ever have. Jimmy thinks people fight their own disability. He thinks involvement is important for self-improvement. He thinks being open is how you can have a legacy. Um, he feels thankful for working with students inspired by the mission. Um, he works at a mechanic at United. That's exactly what I said too. <laughs> so this is a, a great way to just um, take a, a big interview with students, such a simple student-friendly way to digest it. And then to start thinking, and questioning, oh, am I making an assumption or am I going off of something he said? Um, so that's a way we, you can uh, virtually interact with a community partner. Um, all right, I'm gonna go back to the main presentation. Feel free to keep hanging out. And then this is another example. This is something uh, we were actually gonna do on the paper, but I think we're good to go um, actually, but this is a journey map. And so this is actually a tool we take from the design world um, where we try to learn about a user's journey, maybe with a product or through a service. We actually like to apply it to better understand our community partners. And so one of, one of the interviews students will have two with their community partners, they'll say, tell me a day in the life a day in the life of Jimmy. And as he's uh, sharing, writing down, okay, he wakes up, he says he's thankful. He's unsure if his clothes are clean because he's not able to see, but he's so thankful that his coworker takes him to work every day. He begins work, wow, who hates, who likes work? He can't find his lunch. Sometimes people take his lunch. He's not sure it's his, but then he gets uplifted because he likes to have dinner with his friends. Sometimes he gets insecure about his messy eating. And then he remembers he's got amazing friends. So this is honestly a journey map we've made based off of a, an interview we have with Jimmy um, of him taking us through his day. 
This is a great activity to do with students so that they can start to see what are some patterns in the pain points that Jimmy faces and what are some things that um, are really happy for him and how can we leverage something that's really good for something um, we can solve. And so this is also a great place to ask if you're making assumptions. So those are just two activities that are extremely powerful that can be done virtually with a real person. And that, if you walk away with anything today, is the thing I want you to walk away with, that we just had someone jump in for 10 minutes and we had a very um, real interaction and it was not a um, set of problems that is like a worksheet style. It promoted empathy, it promoted broadening and experience, and that took 20 minutes. We are adults, however, times that by two for kids, 40 minutes. It's really powerful and there's a lot of um, benefits that go for both parties. So my point I wanna to make to you is that real world problem solving is something we wanna prepare all of our students for, but that can't happen unless we're giving them real world connections. We have to give them, we have to stop speaking in theories and we have to give them something real to work with. Um, I wanna share, and, and Jimmy kind of touched on this too, um, who makes a great community partner? I know both of the people in these photos um, have disabilities and that is not um, necessarily the something that has to happen. A community partner could be someone that works for a local business. A community partner could be some a, a local firefighter, um, a city council person. It, it, it's just the someone that's willing to share. But I do think that some partners are better fits with students and others. And so these are two awesome partners we've had at Project Inven in the past. And I wanna share really what makes them great and what made the experience so great. So for Jimmy, he connected students with other users that had visual impairment. So he had gave them more opportunities to learn. He gave very honest feedback to our students. He didn't sugarcoat it, but he was kind. Um, but when they were inventing for him, they made something with a hat and he was like, guys, I don't wear hats. He's honest, you know, and he's not gonna, he's not gonna tell the students, oh yeah, I like this. He's gonna tell them, no, if you're really trying to make a great product, you have to consider my user needs and I don't wear hats. And I think that's what makes Jimmy so great. And the kids completely pivoted to another idea. Um, he asks the students about themselves, so he builds a relationship, and he comes with an open mind to new ideas, except about hats. Um, and then Abigail was another uh, partner we worked with, and she um, is a practicing artist and is such an advocate for um, mobility, uh, people who have mobility disabilities. And she was really great because she um, let students use her wheelchair. Like, she was like, get on in it, try it out. She was not um, afraid to let them experience what she experiences. They also, she also let them work with her service dog. She was very open about her condition and she asked really good questions. Um, these two people, they, they were really in it for the impact on students and the relationship. Um, and I think that that's what makes people great. I think Jimmy's right, if somebody is, um, is not is, is still really processing um, their situation, it might not be the best fit for this time. So this is kind of our criteria when we look for community partners. And I kind of just went all over this, but the one thing that I would also say is when you're looking for someone to work with your students, making sure this almost second to last point that they're not expecting a product by the end, um, because again, this is a student project and a student experience and being really upfront with that in the beginning. Um, I just wanted to give some other examples of, of partners, workers in safety, uh, leaders at local nonprofits, elected officials, parents are awesome partners, um, sharing about ch even parents with children um, that have learning disabilities. We've had parents that have children on the autism spectrum work with our teams before and, and come up with some really great ideas. Um, caretakers, elderly, a lot of different areas where, where people are, are actually really excited to share um, what's going on and, and empower the next generation. 
Um, two things that I just wanted to show is um, how do we do this virtually? So Mural, I just showed you an example of that is a great place to collaborate. And then Flipgrid is like a video messaging website. And I wanted to just show you, this is one of our teachers showing a prototype. And this is a great way your students can get feedback from their community partner. Let me make sure that the audio works. Hello, everyone. Can you hear that? Uh, my name is Caesar. Okay. So my prototype. Uh, so we were talking about issues of eating with utensils. Uh, so we thought of a utensil glove or some sort of attachment to the fingers. Um, so you have tech that would vibrate um, to detect different temperatures of food and also proximity to food. Um, also, I was looking at just prototypes of adding beveled edges to help be easier to contain food inside or on top of the utensil. So he filmed that on Flipgrid and then Jimmy was able to um, hear that. And I would say he probably needs to explain what it looks like a little bit more, but Jimmy could then make a video of himself responding to that. And I think that this is a great way to virtually have that um, kind of user interview experience. So Flipgrid's great. You could also just do this with simple video messages back and forth. I just know with students, sometimes we need it on a more safe platform. Um, and then another thing I just wanna highlight here is let's look at the positives in the fact that we're remote. That means community can be a lot broader. <laughs> so in Project Invent, we usually have students work in their direct zip code with someone that lives in their zip code. But now that we're in this remote world, we're able to think about more global issues. Um, I personally am in a grad school program, a design grad school program, and I'm working on a solution in Uganda. And I've been able to have user interviews and user testing with people halfway across the world. Um, and I think that that's something we can open up to our students right now in thinking about the SDGs and thinking about how we can leverage this remote world and that people are getting more comfortable with this for giving them real world experience. Um, lastly, if you're still like, okay, I get it, Kelly, community partners are legit and we should do it. We're having a follow-up um, workshop in about a month where we're actually gonna be a bit more logistical. So we're literally gonna create together a recruitment plan for you to get a community partner connected with your students. So a little bit more practical. This one, we really wanted to make the case and give you kind of the experience and understand why, why we believe this is important right now. The next one, we're gonna get real nitty gritty and make a plan and share some best practices for the recruitment. So um, if you are, we wanted to leave you wanting more, <laughs> make sure you come back for that one. Um, so if you wanna get involved with what we do, um, please, we can uh, sign you up for our newsletter. We can download, download our free curriculum. Jillian's gonna drop the links for this in the chat. Also, we do, um, we do a mini training in, um, with, uh, in the winter. And so that'll actually be in February and it's free for public school teachers. So if you wanna to apply to be a part of that, we will definitely uh, love to send you that. So Jillian, if you could just drop all that good stuff in the chat. And also, did you share the slide deck already? Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, we'll leave it open for questions. If you need to hop out, hop out. Um, but we'll hang around for a little bit if you want to have a more intimate conversation. Kelly, I have a question for you. Sure. So I thought, I thought, uh...